Hello! Welcome to another free e-learning tutorial from dacanane.com. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a kid blog. Creating a class blog is easy. All I have to do is to click on the create a class button. When the new pop-up window appears I can either opt to sign up directly or use my Google credentials to create an account. I'm going to use my Google logon. Once authenticated I am then presented with the add a class option. The name I give my class will also be the URL of my blog in the form of kidblog.org forward slash class name, so choose carefully. Now that my class is created, I want to set the blog's settings. To do this, I click on the settings tab on the right of the top menu here. I will work through the new settings tab starting with a general tab. The first thing to look at is the class sign up code. Use this code if you want to let your students sign up by themselves to your blog. I will show you how to use the bulk user creator later. In the general tab here you can change the blog title, the avatar, the time zone for your blog to get the right timestamps, the date format, etc. Here is where you set the basic structure of your blog. In the general tab and the themes tab there is not too much to consider in terms of student and third party access issues so I can change these settings around as often as I wish. In the themes tab it is possible to select a theme from the list available and there is nothing to stop me from changing themes weekly if I like to keep the blog fresh and to keep my audience interested. To change a theme it is simply a process of scrolling through the pre-built themes to a theme I like and then clicking on the activate link and the theme is set. Simple as that really. Next I'll look at the widgets tab. This is now where I can really start to customise my blog and where I can start to think how my audience can quickly find content on my blog. The first option I have to change is the blog avatar. This needs no explanation and I'll leave it to you to work that out. Ensure that the tags option is checked and I'll explain why later. What is interesting is the stats widget. Your kids need an audience so enable this tool so they have a visual proof that there is an audience out there even if that audience is lurking. The blog roll widget is a good tool too, especially if you are quad blogging. So enter here all the blogs you follow or are associated with in your class. It's good for search engine optimization too. Audience building to you and me. So now on to the raison d'etre of the blog, posting and commenting. How you set this up is entirely dependent on what restrictions your school or district puts on you. I personally favour blogs being open for all to read and to restrict who can post to teachers and students. But if you want to moderate posts before they are published, there is an option to do that here. When I'm happy with my settings, I click on the Save Changes button to set them. Obviously, I can alter these settings at any time to tighten or loosen the control. Again, in the Comments settings of the blog, I personally prefer a more open option. I enable anyone to comment, but set all comments to be moderated by a teacher. So the teacher has control over what comments are made public and those that never make the light of day. Setting up a blog like this, gives the students the authentic audience the blog enables, whilst providing the best protection from spammy or inappropriate comments on posts. To set these settings, I again click on the Save Changes button. In KidBlog, it is possible to create bulk users and passwords by uploading a pre-prepared CSV file. A note of warning here though, if you want to use my concatenate spreadsheet method as in the bulk creator user tool in Wikispaces, it won't work in KidBlog. KidBlog will only accept a two column CSV file with one column for usernames and one for passwords. If you're unsure how to create a CSV file and all CSV means is comma separated values, create your spreadsheet and then save it as a CSV from the file type options drop down list. To bulk create users, I have to have already created my CSV file. Browse to it using the browse button and once located, I then click on the process CSV file. KidBlog then uploads the, and processes this file. Be patient here as KidBlog does not give many visual clues that it is indeed processing your files. When it has completed its task, KidBlog provides me with a list of successfully completed users. By default, all newly created users are set at the lowest level at student level with minimum permissions. If I wish to elevate a particular user to a higher level of permission, all I have to do is to click on the edit button below each user and browse down to the class membership option and from that drop down box set a new membership level for that particular user. 
Now my kid blog is set up and ready to be used. I have created student level users. I have defined who can create posts and how comments are handled. In the next tutorial, we will look at creating posts, the use of labels and embedding different content into posts. So that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more e-learning tutorials. And don't forget to let your colleagues know. These tutorials are for sharing, so please do. Until my next tutorial hits your feeds, keep practicing!